round back in favor of G2. A couple of great shots being landed. Double eco status now by themselves. Flash over Kenny. Tagged up early by the uh, key composition. Yeah, that's right. Ethan, we first to fall here in the pop dog control as Hunter takes that SMG straight towards him. Frag found Tarek. Hoping for a drop down of the Tech Niners this will be very risky if he can get it. It might be turning the tide back to the favor of the EG side. For now, though, it goes quiet. Yeah, I'm in it. If they can draw his attention away from Tcon, that could allow a bit of a slow walk in from Ivy. Now the tag comes up. This is some really decent damage going down towards the CT side, but it's still the man advantage up for G2. Nico now taking a little bit of damage. Not a massive amount, however. Yeah, minimal amounts on that CZ, only doing so much damage. And Evil Geniuses still playing around these defaults. It's Breezy with this Deagle, checking out the back lines towards Stopper and Olaf. This corner can't see anything. Nico still playing on the top of the trains. Has Hunter to back him up here from the pop dog position. Tarek still waiting for him to peek. He's not moved an inch so far. That smoke may buy him the cover he needs to get down Hunter. Distracted for the moment. And Tarek slowly makes the move in. No. Not being seen by Hunter. Can't see him either past that smoke. The SMG will make his way out. And there's Breezy isolating Nico, taking him down. Four on four being gained. Is Hunter's attention drawn away? I believe it might be no. Gets that kill on Tarek now. Four on three situation. The CTs are heavily tagged. And it's going to make way past those flames. And Breezy as a high HP player. And Nexa next to fall into the connector. Three versus three. And Hunter's still back here at Pobdog. They haven't they aren't, haven't been able to deal with him here. They should be aware. Obviously, one man went down, so Cirque's covering it off. Yeah, look, good information gathering here for Evil Geniuses, but for G2, like, they can get this retake together, but look at the low HP players. Status Law now trying to make a bit of a backstab in, tap it away onto mid-bomb. It's all down to Hunter and Amanek to bring this round together. Swings, swings around. What a shot coming out from Cirque with that scout. I thought it was going to be the Deagle, a breezy to find the connection, but it's another turnaround shot, and Hunter's now got to save. Jeez, we are going back and forth now. G2 have to force by going forward. Evil Geniuses, what a response is and look at the weapons they picked up yes sir already invested into that scout but they get a free mp9 and that galil too and ak immediately rebought by breezy as a result impact player of the last round now trying to see if he can do the same right here two ak's in play for the eg camp and g2 as you mentioned having the force buy up hunter has an aug which is already a concern for the uh, t side two deagles as well nexa was playing well with those in the previous set of rounds the scout out for amanek and the MP9 on Nico, of course, saving him from the last round. Already faced in by Sanislaw. Two nades up here. Does do damage towards him, but no lower than 60. Nico can take the 68 for the moment here as EG just play off the defaults. Again, not aggressing towards Pop Dog. Yeah, not taking any Brown Horse control either this time around for EG. So I won't really be able to bait out any kind of map control over towards there unless maybe there's a bit of a solo play for Ethan with the bomb. Amanek out from Ivy. Two players swing together. Doesn't quite find the connection. Gets smoked off and has to relocate. EG looking to try and maybe take this Bob Dog control and split towards the A site. Or maybe start to at least take that Brown Hall's presence and have a late lurk out from Ivy. We saw Sanus Lord doing that in the pistol. And now backing up from this Ivy presence, actually, for the T's. Minute to the clock. EG. Leaning up to the Brown Halls once again. They played a lot of Pop Dog presence very early in this round. So now a chance to go exit towards the B site. No further aggression from Nico. He's going to hear these footsteps in from Tarek though. That Molotov will force him back out of position. And now all the flashes go out towards the B site. There are no defenders here. So Plow can come in easy. Stanislaw checking his corners. Now going to turn his attention back to Connector and the back lines where the CT players be coming in from CT spawn. Breezy actually takes the advanced angle as the plant is secured open. Now, G2 don't really look like they want to go for it, do they? They are so passive about this. They might just trying to be looking for exakills and bring these weapons forward into the next round rather than trying to attempt to go for a 5-on-5 five five retake. Amonek's got no armor, no kits in play, very light on the utility, and not even looking for exits, just trying to back off immediately, go out from Tcon and from Ivy. 5-on-5 five five save, really. And for Evil Geniuses, you couldn't have asked for an easier take. Maybe if they went out towards the A site, it could have been a different story, but... They regroup Brown Halls, they go into B, and they don't even have to take a, 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 a single contact at all, even this late into the Exe. No, not at all. 
no casualties on either side, which is a very rare kind of round in a Counter Strike. Works better for EG, obviously, as they get the bomb blast to explode. Grab their weapons and, of course, carry them into the next round. G2 will have an eco in this round, so it would have been, you know, pistols, USPs if they had all gone down. So saving those weapons in means that they can get back the SMG. Of course, the Deagle's in for several players. Nico passing off to Nexta instead as he actually passes back the Deagle towards Nico's position. I wonder what he wants to do with it here. Out towards the uh, B play for Nexta first up with the SMG. Okay, that's probably the reason why he was passed off that. Better spawn to try look for the kills. Flashes in, he goes right past him. The T's have no idea he's up here though. Ethan close range with the bomb. That could be a huge kill and indeed it is. Frag found, he gets the hell out of there. Yeah, really decent start coming through from Nexa, playing a bit of an off angle in the brown halls and just being really cautious, right? You know, he gets that big, drops that bomb, but doesn't look for any more, holds onto the advantage and brings it back. Unfortunately, doesn't quite pick up that weapon from Ethan of the Galil. Utility coming down on towards B. EG just gonna push it. Next back in the corner, still gets two Ooh. and three kills. On for the quadra, not quite. Tarek actually makes it two. And now he stands alone in a one versus three. That bomb in the open getting picked up, reload allowed. And needs to fight Kenny S to his left and two other CTs to his right. And the flick is not good enough to get the headshot in the end. G2 will get their second to the CT board. And the money should balance itself out for a rifle round now. A little bit late into this half, but EG should be on the buy. Yeah, it's been a little bit scrappy so far, but we're eventually getting into a rifle round. Cirque's going to be able to invest into the AWP. AKs go round to pretty much everyone. Stanislaw's going to have to just be on a Galil. Double orbs coming through for G2 going into round six. Kenny S and Amanek picking those up. We've seen Amanek playing out towards the back green train and out from Ivy for the majority of the CT bases so far. Early anti-rush nades in towards T. On, but it's going to be the Ivy presence coming through very quickly from EG. Orb of Amanek watching down. Smokes in from hunting and drop them out towards this uh, pop dog position to ensure that the uh, T side players can't make their way into entry. Orb of Cirque starts facing towards Ivy, knowing that Amanek must be around here somewhere. It's carefully positioned from the EG side. Start facing, and they give up the kill. No flash, no utility, drive face in, and Breezy gets punished for it. Smokes back from the CT side, will keep them suppressed. They can't make their way out of this position yet. And not a lot of map presence gained at all here from Evil Geniuses. We're finally starting to show some sort of control out from Tcon, but you've just got to think that they've kind of got to commit to a bit of a split towards the A side. Cirque finds a really all-important necessary kill. That turns it back to an even playing field now. Hunter, Org on site, ready to receive him. 40 seconds, Amanek wins off in, still gets a shot on Ethan. Nice kill. Spray back on Hunter, gets the next player in Stanislaw. That's bomb dropped in the open. All the kills go in the way of the T side line. Suck holding this Ivy entrance, expecting CTs to come in from the spawn position. And does get one in the end, but way, way, way too late into the round. Has got to go back and save. The CTs might go hunting. This will be G2 up to three all. Yeah, a bit of a, an aggressive play coming through out from Tikon. What a shot coming through from Cirque. Unfortunately, he can't quite do anything more than that, but just try and uh, hold on to this AWP, bring it forward into the next round. Now that, that was pretty decent. He had the hops, he had the shot, and he had the survival. I know that there have been some people that have criticized Cirque in recent times. I'm, uh... I mean, obviously, it's Can't not as impactful. <laughs> yeah, it's not as impactful of a frag here in this round, but obviously, one, one silence the haters for a second or two, you know? I'll pull that out in the actual round and get the round itself, and then EG would be a one step closer to victory. Unfortunately, this will not be the round where they can do so. A Deagle, a CZ, a Mac 10, and a P250 to back up the big green gun. Double up set up in from G2 already, starting things off real early in this one. Fast place down, ramp countered, baiting in the smoke and the HE from Nexa. Incendiary also club tools up for as well, but they're actually gonna make their way through it this time. Burning away, Breezy and Cirque in a very bad position. They do manage to get that four versus four, but trade is still good for the CT side. Just get that bomb plant in, secure some extra cash, because now you're down to pistols and the CTs are so close towards your grill. Stanislaw will get one trade back, but still a man advantage for G2. 
Oh, Naeem G's actually been picked up and a tap comes through from Status Law. Two versus two scenario and they don't know about Terek. Nico and Amanek on for the retake and look at this repositioning. Amanek shouldn't be able to hit this shot. The back 10 struggling, <gasps> running out of bullets. He's got to go back over the clock. Nico now starting to slow walk in from heaven. Time is incredibly low and Nico doesn't have a kit. This round looks like it is all but over. Terek finds another kill and it's all down to Nico. This is done. EG have found their fourth. What a wild round coming out from both sides. They're going to try and hunt down the enemy B. Nico's going to be able to keep that in play. Oh my goodness. What is going on? That was great utility usage coming down from Nexar. Great shooting down from the EG side. Eventually turning things back to their favor. Again, they weren't ready for the MAC-10 flank. And that is ultimately what cost them here. Four to three, EG defend the lead here on T side and a very good T side posted up by them so far. Can see why they picked this map. A lot of people expect their CT side to go flawlessly and right now, G2 lesser could be said, the better. 0% win rate in the last part if they want to bring this back against EG. Mr. The Smoke, and meanwhile in the brown holes they do get to, but they don't know that the bomb. Yeah, this, this gets awkward from both teams because Cirque's calling out that the A-bomb side's open. Oh, a bit of a tap coming through. Kenny has saw the information. Oh, and he even finds the kill to Cirque. Two versus two tries to go back over to the weapon. And now Amonex, the one trying to lurk out from Tcon. USP set for the 1v2 clutch. If he had the P250 in tow, then I would have given it the chance, but he's seen Stan. <gasps> he's stuck in their blind spot. Are they ready for this? Breezy's got his back turned towards it. USP taps through. Oh! Couldn't finish off the kill, only got that one dink. Three kills for Breezy in the end, but three casualties for EG as well. That's a very good eco from G2, one that can follow up with a buy. When you think about that, they had that AWP saved in from Nico, and it wasn't even the AWP that was doing the majority of the damage, it was just the few pistols that they had. Yeah, that's that's very decent indeed. And buy down for Kenny S to get that AWP, the big green gun going into round nine. Evil geniuses though. Looking to try and farm up a little bit of money from Cirque at least. Mac 10 coming out and fast play coming through for a few players in towards showers. Hunter going somewhat aggressively with the anti rush nades out towards Pop Dog. Oh, look at the aggression from Amanek towards the server racks. You know, straight pushed up, Orp of Kenny to back him up. Is he going to push forward to the smoke? Flashbang in, actually. Seems to be the case. And he gets shut down for it. Cirque with that Mac 10 straight in. Get a $600 frag on a rifle. Orp in for Kenny, we'll keep watching, sees those flashbangs, sees that run face as well. Kenny just backed up here towards the Ivy control, still looking for a swing and a kill. Oh. Tough catch Cirque actually, that's a good frag to a four versus four, not bad. A yeah, really decent flick and a really good one to actually turn it back to a 4v4. The thing that they haven't accounted for, though, is this walkout towards a B-side. AWP in the back lines, trying to see if they can deal with the Spools player. Nexus staying alive and holding on. Bomb plan needs to go down, but they're running out of players. It's down to just two left on the T side. Breezy and Ethan. I believe there's a backstabbing coming towards the brown horse. No, that's a player in T coming his way back to join the main CT forces. Hunter gets the kill. Can't quite get Ethan. Ethan holding for time. Sees one player top of the trains. Gives up the info to exactly where his position is. Molotov should force him back here at the marshmallow angle. And indeed, he does go down. The bomb plant should be defused here. 10 seconds on the defuse, so it will be close. But uh, they've got plenty of time, I believe, for G2 to take a fourth. Keep this even. And this is the back and forth brawl that we hope to see out of these two squads. Very well known, very reputable, and of course, very well accomplished. So a hard one to call even from the word go. Yeah, look, certainly. I think that both of these teams are wanting results, right? I think that both would be... Saying that their results recently in terms of placings have been very average. Uh, so getting a, a deep run here in Katowice could mean a lot for either of these two teams. EG haven't made a roster move in God knows how long. G2 have recently made a couple of changes. But really, for the cause, we haven't seen a lot. You've got to remember, G2 only had uh, Jackson instead of Nico for last year's IM Katowice, in which they made it to the grand finals. One round the difference between these two sides on train. Early utility coming out for the top of Brown Halls out towards the A site. One defender over at B. Flash forward. The CT side to try to get themselves a lot of presence on A. You're right about that B position, but Nexus still deals with it. Finds himself a kill. Trying to tap into that second, eventually gets it down. 
So Tarek and Ethan, first two to four, and the bomb can get planted, but EG down by a two-man advantage. At least Breezy can trade one player back and connect to Flash in to maintain as part of the map. Trade up to the AK, perhaps? Oh, he hasn't really got his eyes on it. Focusing mostly on extending even further out to catch a secondary AK here in the connector control. On the bomb site is where Nico's at. Drops Breezy back. The four versus two situation. Time is of the essence, but still EG take their time. Still G2 take their time. First two against the AWP next. They can counteract it, so it's got no utility to put down here. They can get over the bomb, and the Deagle's basically been covered off at this stage. G2 have this round. There's nothing left in the tank for EG in this one. Bit overzealous for me. If they had gone back to the site, if they upgraded those rifles and focused on the main CT force, then maybe there could have been a round victory in there. Yeah, I suppose because they're a man down, right? They thought that if we went further aggressive in con from Breezy and cut off one more rotation, then we could slow it down and, and start to put the advantage in our favor. But it doesn't quite work out the way they would have liked. Nico was very disciplined in the mid bomb position on the A site to actually wait for that over aggression to come through from Breezy. And from there, Cirk, there's just no way that he's going to win a 1v4 like that. EG now taking a bit of a tactical pause. Money is just not there for them. Yeah, despite the Bon Plant bonus, again, you know, there's, there's so, much, so much investment in the last couple of rounds means that they've just been overwhelmed by G2 so effectively. And their economy management has not been great, I don't think. To go deco around the uh, save weapon Kevlar for Cirk. Currently sitting at the uh, second stage loss bonus. So can afford a buy into the next round if they go for the eco here. And that seems to be the case. A little bit of utility board down. A thousand dollars investment at best on the high roller players. And the Deagles, the P250s up against the full blown set of rifles. Should be G2 taking the lead back here from EG. Smoke's outside though. Very quick out of the gate into the A site. So maybe a bomb plant could be stuck in through the midst of that smoke. Tarek so far forward. Catches off one player. He's stuck behind them all. What is this? Oh, they have no idea. They have absolutely no idea. Nex is in serious, serious trouble. Does he swing? Does Tarek wait for the rotation? Does he get this kill? What's the call here? Oh, this could be big. If they take down the B anchor, this could be a bomb plant. He's going to get behind him. He might even go for a knife, Jake. Get that extra little bit of money in. There's no way Nexa turns around. There's absolutely no way. This should be an easy oh. kill. Knife coming through. Oh, is he going to get the knife? He's waiting for the angle. Yes, yes. there it is. Finally. <laughs> and now look how quickly the rotates to come through. There's actually a chance for a bomb plan. And they've got Tarek aggressive. The Galil gets shut down. Two frags for Nico in this one. Four versus three. And for an eco round to get this money, to get this damage, what? maybe even get the round, perhaps. Well, Amanek and Kenny have something to say about that. Ethan's still here towards the back of Red Train. He's going to get dealt with. Amanek with a 2k. But still, pistols alone on a very low buy. <laughs> That's going to be a sick for G2, but EG will be very happy with that. Well, what a round. Um, look, look at the money that they've gained. They got three kills, a bomb plan, and a knife. It must have just been so much utility out towards the A site that even Tarek making a couple of footsteps getting into connector was just not hurt at all. Jeez. EG are going to be happy about that one. G2, though, it's a round victory at least. That there is. Double Ops, M4s in for G2, of course, rebuying back against the very defined by the EG side. Bomb plant bonus damage being done. They've got so much to work with here in this next round. Nexa looks to try and frag back against Tarek. In the end, his damage going to be combined alongside Hunter's Molotov through the window. Gets Tarek to fall. Ethan will find a trade. And Nico still sat in Pop Dog. Knows that there's a bunch of T-side players up there. He won't aggress much further than this. He's going to play passive. And Breezy sneaks out towards Old Hell. Could catch a player off from the back of the site. The AWP in Amanek at A2 might be their main concern, though. Yeah, I don't know if Breezy expects Hunter to actually be boosted up in for Connector, though. The timing's got to be everything here. He could be on for at least a couple of kills, but no! It's the NWP from Ivy that backs up his teammate. Hunter now gets involved. Stannis Law's incredibly low. This nade could take him down. Raining through, and there it is. Cirque now at a 1v3. You said timing was everything, and Amanex Pete came in at the perfect moment. Nades on this man. Hunter will be the one to finish off the job. Get himself a 3k. Out of sandwich and G2 to establish a 7-5 on the CT side.
VG focus mostly on another eco, maybe a half by a round. They're currently sad at a max loss bonus, so they'll be happy with uh, a buy in the next round. It will leave G2 to win the CT half, however. Yeah, EG are not finding it easy to win these T-side rounds out. We saw from the start they had a 5-3 to three lead. This is now four rounds in a row going the way of G2. Have to go for another half by Eco. Upgrading a fair bit of weaponry coming through from the pistols. Kit up for, oh, at least utility coming through. Kevlar too. But for G2, they are starting to pound up these rounds. And you've got to think if they can get to, what, eight, nine rounds on their city side, I think they'll be pretty happy with what they've achieved, considering they're in an 0-4 record on train in the last three months. Yeah, like I said, 0% win rate for G2 to get this kind of a map would be miraculous, but also very big for them. Shots of Amanek down into the Ivy control. Can't catch that first player. That first contact. Kenny also looking towards upper here from the uh, back lines of the uh, of the B site. Nades up, incendiary set for Nexa, just shoulder baiting, hoping to catch off some T side presence. Ready to shut down EG's execute as soon as he sees those flashbangs coming in. Oh, there's a play coming in from Old Bomb though. stanislaw has been able to pick up an AWP now dealing with Amanek, bringing lots of players over towards this B site and Nex is starting to push up aggressively. Everyone's trying to get towards this oil train for the T site but they don't know about the wraparound. Breezy's Deagle finds onto one. Nex now turns it back to a three versus three but the Deagles continue doing damage and now Hunts is the last one left. A massive eco going the way of Evil Geniuses. It started off with Stanislaw in the lurk on the backstab but it was Breezy to come up big once again. So what's that, Eco 3 or number 4 or so? A ridiculous <laughs> amount, Jay. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> there, there, there's been a few. There, there, there has been yeah. a few. Let's put it that way. And uh, I would love to see exactly how many more there will be. The main rifles are back in. The orbs out, AKs, M4s, AUGs. Wallbang attempt from Cirque coming in a little bit late. The CT's not lining up for it. That flashbang in from Stanislaw allows Breezy two kills. Five versus three gain. There's still a Thama down here at the sandwich control. Trying to push the Olaf backs off. Breezy drops in and does get taken back with Amanex orb kill and Tarek. That leads to an even man standing until Stanislaw chimes in. But still, the orb is fragging. Two kills to his name. Smoke down to the left, back off the green train. Blind shots, but not connecting anything at all. And just falls back to passive. We'll go for the retake. I think they're going to save this, really. I mean, you have a look at the situation. No Kevlar for Amanek and no kit and no utility. It's going to be a tough one. Unless they get a kill sort of out of nowhere, like an over-aggression, then I think they just have to kind of save. And Cirque, you've got to think of the advantage here. Ooh, Ethan falls. That actually pulls the distraction away. Suck. Sandwich between two CT players. Those are hooks in the back lines. Shot on stop. It doesn't connect. Back to Amanek. He's going to get shut down. And the orbs stay in for an eighth to the board of G2EG. Good effort there on that round, but it just was not enough. The CT side will have the half in the end. The bomb plant bonus should be able to enable a buyback for the EG side. I've got plenty of cash for it, it seems. I want to highlight the numbers as well for Breezy. 15 kills so far in this map. He is having a hell of a T side. Yeah, he's been involved uh, massively when it comes to entry kills, whether it comes to trading, but. It just feels like for Evil Genius is not quite capitalizing on some of the advantages there in that 2v2. Great distraction play as soon as Nexa gets that kill that Cirque's attention's pulled away from Tekon. Otherwise, it would have just been what assumes is a simple connection onto Amanek. A lot of utility starting to come out towards this A site. Early trade comes out for a one for one. No more aggression really comes out though for the T side. No one getting in towards Sandwich or Olaf. Oh, Kenny upstairs in the uh, upper position over on the brown hall is going to take Cirque down. I wasn't sure if he was aggressing from this angle, but he is. He takes a man advantage back for the CT side. Doesn't get greedy, though. Backs off. Goes back into the ramp control. Waits for the T's to overextend there, but with Pop Dog presence, this indicates it might end up being... An A hit. One kill for Nico. Tarek trades it. Three versus two. Open the back lines of Amanek. Watching with someone out here in his main seats. Contact. Breezy gets the kill. Two versus two. Plant can be secured. Yeah, very winnable here coming out for Evil Geniuses. A big frag to come through from Breezy. Just, just wide swinging onto the NWP out towards back green once getting that information. 
Kenny S from Connector, and we're even seeing a bit of an approach coming in from Breezy out towards the back lines of Ivy. Nexa and Kenny S. The rotators out from the B site, trying to see if they can get this retake together. Oh, what a spray through from Breezy, takes down one, Nexa trades it on the smoke now. Gonna try to go for an injury, he's been seen. Tarek gives up his angle, nade back to old hell. Tarek waits, tap on the bomb once, spray through, again the position being revealed. Nice out, he thinks Nexa's still on it, but no, he's not there at all. Tarek's gonna back off, look at where Nexa's at himself. The knife continues to come through, and Tarek turns the clock up for the frag. To clutch a seven for EG to equalize the half and head to a break. Never die. A close half has ended up being here between G2 and Evil Geniuses in what may continue to be as epic an affair on a train. Back and forth we've gone. It looks like we'll continue going back and forth as EG set up to their CT side. Two diffuse kits in play here, Dweg. What have they got to work with? Yeah, this is a bit intriguing, isn't it? You've got a Julie setup coming out for Cirque and double kids coming through for Evil Geniuses. A very heavy, aggressive presence coming through from Tarek to find that first pick. They might not check Ethan's position. Very similar to where Hunter was in the opening pistol. Finds that first. It's actually Tarek to be able to find three kills in the round to find the advantage. And that bomb just gets dropped in the middle of the site. And Tarek's still aggressive down here. There was the Brown Hall's hunt. Block outbursting. Who can't get his player? So Tarek went for another knife there. Evil geniuses in with and swing momentum their favour early in the half. Got a wonder here for evil geniuses the off the map, right? But then it was sort of whether that's going to continue coming out because for G two they're not forced. 
I'm a little bit surprised about that. Yeah, they didn't get many rounds starting off this half. We went, you need to get a force in. Yeah, Glock's out, G2, no bomb plant. I mean, I guess they're gonna go for the buy in the next round at least. Fully definitive buy, of course, for the C for the T side. Ethan watching with the SMG, checking out the pop dog control. Doesn't see anything more here. G2 with a very passive default, realizing that they are at a significant disadvantage on firepower. Yeah, lots of long range angles being found, and look at this some status or aggression. Bomb gets dropped. Yeah, this round is done now. I know it's just a Glock round, but this should be an easy cleanup. I say that the Glocks actually just all swing together. So, decent trade comes back. Now they've got an MP9 in play, but the whole ghost of what the T side setup is is pretty much given up now that he's seen three players in the Brown Halls and spotted out that bomb. 50 seconds. Glock set to drop. Ethan sees his feet. Burst up. Can't get the kill. In the areas onto the T composition. One CT resting out towards Ivy. Probably going to get shut down by Nico. No, he checks the position. One more frag found by the Evil Genius's side as Ethan is so focused, mainly on controlling against these pistols. Makes it a nice triple. Plenty of money gained. And yeah, G2 running straight in against these SMGs will give quite an economy basis for EG to work with going forward. The rifles are out. The AKs are in. The T side have some bite. Okay, well, AK is coming through. Luka Lil's coming out at all for the T side, but uh, they are going for the firepower heavy rather than the full utility sets. Evil geniuses do take back a lead, and we've gone through many situations in which one team takes a lead, and then it goes back the other way. So they're going to have it at least for one round. Let's see if they can continue it forward. Fast play out towards the Brattles for the T's. MP9 aggressive coming in for Status Law. Opening pick comes. That's the anchor dealt with. The bomb site's completely open. Now pushing straight aggressive. Oh, miss smoke there. Does extinguish from Cirque. Secondary smokes and this in the area is down. So it's going to burn quite heavily here. Nico sprays up, does damage, gets that frag together in a five versus three situation. And EG are going to go save. No sense in throwing them all rifles back at this T side line. They have confidently and efficiently taken control of the B site. Well. It all starts off with aggression both ways, right? We saw Stanislaw pushing up a very aggressive up for ramp with that MP9. He loses that opening fight. G2 just pummel their way in towards the B side, continue the acceleration. And from there, there's no anchor or there's no more anchors at the B side. Rotates come through. Cirque can't quite find anything out from connector. And from there, they go, right, let's just save. No worth going in for the retake. And G2, while they may have given EG the lead, we've now gone tied up again. Nine all even. G2 establishing themselves on T side. Obviously, EG had a pretty decent T side, all things considered. Go forward with their CT half to try and stomp out the G2 camp and establish their presence here. Got the uh, smokes up here to the uh, default positions on the A site. Flashes over Ethan, AUG. Down in Pop Dog, where Kenny could be a bit of a problem for him. Instead, it's the T side. They just press forward onto the uh, Brown Halls and try go for the B setup here. They got Stanislaw with that Fama. We'll wait back passive and expect G2 aggression to come through soon. It's very limited firepower for the CT side, though. A decent read, though, coming out from Terek to actually rotate over. He could try and re-smoke up ramp, try and just hold down a little bit longer. Late lurk out from Ivy is dealt with from Nex up, but it's the pummel rush in towards the B side again. Fantastic trades out for the T side to get it back to a three versus three, but now it's down to the Bosnian cousins. It's Nico and Hunter in the post plan. And one player playing at Marshmallow, another one pushing straight up towards back a stopper. With the AUG caught off by Hunter. Good flick. The connector spray to his head. Almost taps through on Breezy, but couldn't finish off the job. Now it's Nico. Back turned to Sug. I don't think he caught his vision. And he's so far away from the bomb plant itself. As soon as he reveals position, unless he gets the kill on the player at ramp, he's waiting. Ooh. He's sprayed through, and Sug catches the kill. And missing out on that position, missing out on that player is going to cost them big time. As EG defend the lead at 10 to 9. Yeah, look, that was a really big turnaround that I suppose that because for EG, now that they've got someone coming in through the uh, Brown Halls, they're kind of clearing out a lot of the bomb site and still not knowing where Nico is. So they end up turning him and swinging around back towards looking to connector. And he's right there just when you got the information from both players. 
a decent trade start off, but Evil Geniuses, it was really dealing with that lurk from Nexa, which gave them the advantage. And get that retake together and take back the lead. Double digits now gained by them on their map pick. The drop down coming through from G2. Fast plays out into the A bomb site. In through Pop Dog, especially. AK spray from Breezy's Orc. He does get that kill. Tarek follows suit before he goes down. And he still catches the headshot of Nico. That was a good pre fire. And a two man advantage gained by EG as a result. Hunter is pressing forward. A flashbang in from Kenny will allow him to look towards the Ivy presence. Got a bison breathing room for Kenny to get that bomb plant in. The AWP and the AK watching taking a frag back so single man advantage still maintained by eg but it might be retake mode coming in from the back of the key comp control and actually breezy's counter doing a great job for g2 to bring it back to evens yeah that's a big whiff coming out from breezy to take on this was a two versus four situation for the t's and now it's been evened up now they can start playing the mind games try and bait in a bit of aggression from the city side ethan and stanislaw Oh, is that bomb go back over to B? That could be the read. If they do that... Oh, they're even continuing to try and fake out from connector at A. But Ethan's got this. He knows. He knows this might be a possibility, but he's thinking about it. Extend towards ramp and potentially win your team the round. The T's are making their way downstairs right now. Ethan can't hear anything from this position. Now about the bomb plant. He knows, he hears it, he hears the ticking, he knows what's going on. But the AWP of Kenny's already locked position from the connector. Shoulder painting, checking the back lines, expected T-Star players to press forward, and Kenny shuts him down. Stanislaw, all the remains. Kit in a flash and an incendiary. There are no incendiaries back for the uh, T-Side camp, but obviously there's no smoke for the vice Stanislaw to cover on a ninja. 20 seconds ticking by on this uh, bomb plant. Molotov in towards the upper area expecting kenny to peek back from rap but sees no contact doesn't even bother with this grabs the aug instead and runs the save for a tenth to the board of g2 they are keeping this one evened out yeah look g2 are applying a lot of pressure here and for evil geniuses it was a decent read from ethan right to actually still be in connector but he tries jingle peeking the orb but try and bait out the shot and kenny still connects what a game this has been. To think that this is only the first map of this best of three, and it has been such a brawl between both of these sides. No one really giving up. Both teams really hammering one another on the rifle rounds. 10 to 10. Tactical timeout coming through again for EG. Because the money, like, it's just not there, right? You've got that saved in AUG. Single, uh, 1900 loss bonus there. They might have to force, and I think that's what the situation is. A second tactical for EG to figure this out, and the, uh, the setup is going to look scrappy as a result of this G2. Of course, so much more confident currently in their current stance. This could be a lead restolen rest again by the European squad. Just such confidence when it comes to these rifle bases. It's only the AUG that they have to work with for EG. Yes, there's Deagles in play. Yes, they have won Deco rounds in the past, especially in the uh, first half of this map up. You can't count on that every single time, you know, especially when there's other weakened weapons like Scouts and two players and Tarek and Sirk. Better be hitting some headshots if they want to make those turn into easy kills. Well, G2 trying to feel out the setup here, get some information as to what EG are playing at. Well, this is a really vital round for both teams. I mean, like, G2 win this, they get the lead, and they completely reset Evil Geniuses. You're probably looking at a 12-10 scoreline before we see rifles coming forward. And for Evil Geniuses, they're just hoping not to get reset, trying to apply pressure back onto their opposition and keep the lead in their favor. Resmoke goes down towards ramp. Very heavy play in towards the Brown Horse. This has got to be a B-side take. Sixty seconds and G two start making their way around to the B site. Stanislaw jump facing AUG home and to catch some sort of presence back here, but the T's make their way out. Incendiaries onto the player that makes his way straight up to connected. There's a player in the CT side that can counteract him. AUG bursts through, spray up. Ethan finds himself one kill. Player in the back of T con, and there's going to be the kill for Almanet coming through against both CT players now. Two K four. He is low, so Tarek can get the exit. But you're right, it's better to save the weapons.
happen at this stage. Yeah, look, uh, a, a difficult situation, right? We know that for Stanislaw, he peeks up, he sees a little bit of presence out from heaven, rotates Cirque in, tries to put some util down towards ramp, and while they do get that one pick, it's not enough in terms of the risk versus reward factor to do we want to go for this? We've done damage to the T side. We know that there's at least a couple of players from heaven, maybe more that we've done considerable damage to. Nico is an example down to just 14 points of health and Amanek under 40. But yeah, look, opting just to hold onto that AK, bring those weapons forward. They'll have to be a very harsh eco. Not a lot of loss bonus for them to work with. 2,400 in the next round. And try and keep those weapons in play. If they can keep an AK in for the next round for the rifles, then that would be great. But for G2, pressure's back on their opposition now. Yeah, lead regained. Usually when G2, the very few times they have played this map up, they've gone about, you know, 16-12. So there have been some close maps in the 16-12 uh, against EG in the past, last uh, groups. To try and return fire and try and return the favor. USP is so close, getting up the A site defense. Left in play. Be a bit of a wraparound can come through from status thoughts expecting much here for evil geniuses in a 2v5 if they get away with an extra kill then great but overall that was just a really nice take of the a site breeze has even been spotted from old bomb and now status is the last one left oh not quite getting nico though 3k for him 12 to 4 to be uh of g2 i should say now eg will be up for the buy what was an eco round of the last one now set up for the M4s in this one. No AWP potential, though. It's straight AUGs and M4s across the board. Automatic weapons in. And Breeze has continued to have an amazing game here for EG, but it's not really converted itself into the lead. You know, it's not hard carrying them out into a, 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 a into a, a, you know, a, a blistering sort of CT side. Might need a bit more support around them if they want to try and get this control out. G2 again going to play fast. Kenny straight into his ramp control. Stanislaw knows it. He backs off. It doesn't even give him a jiggle peek. doesn't even give him an opportunity to strike. A double playing towards Pop Dog coming out for Evil Geniuses. They're now going to start to spread a little bit and bring Cirque out towards that E-Box line. But look, for G2, you already know that they've shown a little bit of heavy presence in towards the Brown Halls. Ethan is alone in Pop Dog. How did G2 use this utility to try and flush him out? Got plenty of mollies, so that's always the, the main sort of thing to look at. HEs as well to try and see if they can burn and then finish off the job with some uh, splash damage. Molotov into the back of the pop dog position, the nade onto the front. Secondary nade will take Ethan very, very low. They'll spray through the wall. He'll return fire, and Hunter knows he's completely flash blinded, so a lot more than just the mollies. Using all the utility to get him to drop, take all the pop dog control, and lean in towards the brown halls, where there's only one player defending the B sites. Now, this AUG, if it overextends, we'll be able to see the scope before Kenny's able to adjust. All just comes down to a matter of timing when the swing comes out from Ali. Breezy, jiggle peeking, didn't quite see him, finally gets to the connection, and now that should be the play into the B site. Smokes and flashes in, even man standing. Body block on that molly. He's going to keep it down to the bat lines over at the ladder entrance. 4v4 retake. One player coming in from the uh, connector control. Three others from CT spawn. Smokes down, mollies and flashes. Going to drive circle away. He is going to go ahead and join the CT side. I thought for a second they might go for a safe call, but no. Spray is blind. They line up so much damage on Nexa here at Summit. Two points of health. Tarry going to swing in. Looks like one train to see his man. But next up, there to get the kill together. Spraying through so far in the open. He's going to aggress against the CT side. Try to look for some exit frags because EG have been driven away. The retake is not on. They're saving their weapons. Uh, this is getting uncomfortable now for Evil Geniuses. G2 keep trying to hunt. If they could just get one more kill, that would make such a difference going forward. Next is only on 2 HP though. So it's going to be a risk if he pushes any further forward. 13 rounds now up for G2 and for Evil Geniuses, I mean, do they, do they, they kind of have to buy here, right? Three weapons saved in, you round that 3k marker, you've just got to buy, just have to force the issue. And maybe trying to take some aggression, trying to take some TCOM presence away from their opposition, maybe trying to go for an aggressive play up towards the Brown Hall. Cirque's got an AWP, that's always an option.
<laughs> M4s and Bama, of course, for Evil Genius is to bolster up their buy up, but it's such a broken setup that G2 again have the firepower bases to shut them down. These executes have looked great so far from the uh, European team. EG needs some sort of uh, response. As you mentioned, starting to get very sweaty, starting to get very concerning for this side. Stannis thought. Cindy set breezy watching the upper control. That AUG desperate to get some sort of opening frag. If G2 rush out like they have done before, though, he might not be given many opportunities. Smokes down, burst through. Spray up gets that first frag. Nico trades it. Stanislaw waiting for Hunter to drop down. Gets that headshot in. Nico's flash blinded by a teammate as well. Seeing where that headshot's at. And Stanislaw takes his secondary kill on 15 HP. A CT's right behind him. Further flashes in. Kenny turns away from it. And Cindy should force him back out of position. I think Stanislaw may hear the shots. And in the end, it's taken back by the AWP. Bombs still in upper, though. They're running out of time to get a plant. Now, there's a bit of a wraparound coming through from Tarek too, and timing is everything here for this backstab because the T-side might not expect it at all. Be a right about the bomb. They've got to try and recover that. It's all just about wasting time here for EG. They've got the man advantage. Kenny S is trying to clear out the bomb site with Nexus, and they're just not seeing anything. 20 real seconds left on the clock. They're running out of time. They've got to make a bit of a play. Kenny S has now been seen out from oil. They've got to get these frags. They've got to get back towards the bomb. It's finally been picked up. Next, they're trying to get it planted, but there's a bit of a backstab coming through from Tarek. Now the P comes through. The AWP shot gets missed by Cirque. A trade comes back, but now it's all down to Kenny S. No scope tries to come through. Goes over the tech nine, but can't quite get it. Evil Genius is fine there, 11th. A chaotic round over at the B side, but it's theirs nevertheless, and they recover a secondary AWP for free. You can feel the struggle from EG, though, to try to bring that back. Of course, the trades in, the very awkward angles, the tight angles that G2 had to peek in very specifically to get up those frags. And the backstab mm. coming in from Tarek that, you know, failed the first time. The orb shot from the bat lines that also failed the first time. They could have shut down the round right there with minimal casualties for the CT camp. 13 to 11. Two rounds the difference. Can EG equalize against G2 on their map pick? Well, it's a fast play out of the popcorn control to try and see if they can deal with that. One player at E box, Amanek, it's a fake. gets that kill. Still have Serk on the bomb site, and the orb sees what's going on. Takes out Nico, drops that bomb. Incendiary to the bomb plant position, backs off away from the summit spot. And Serk watching for someone else to come through from up, but he's got to be concerned about the players that are actually on the site itself. 4v4 retake should now ensue. Yeah, Amanek did a great job of getting out to E-Box with that first pick, but it was a complete fake. They dived quickly into the B-side. Great nade comes down onto Nexa. Four and four. No one's really peeking here from G2 at all. Hunter's not looking the right way out from Oil. Flash comes in, the peek comes, and he finds the advantage back now. What? Oh, and he gets another kill with Kenny chiming in with the orb. Makes it a double. It makes it a 14th for G2. How quickly Evil Genius has fell apart on that site retake. Now, two rounds the difference to G2 and victory. It's got to be a force buy from EG as well. Their economy is in the toilets. Yeah, they're, they're not in a good position at all. No, they're not. Okay, that's a bit weird, right? We're seeing Breezy buy down to $600, but everyone else is almost taking this as a bit of an eco. Miscoordinated, and at this stage in the game, you don't want to miss buy like this. Yeah, exactly. Breeze is going to have nothing to work with in the next round unless these upgrade pistols, unless his Famas takes a round for EG. Stanislaw pushes forward, almost catches Hunter, but not good enough. Not enough damage at 34 HP. He stays alive. Tarek now here at Sandwich. Hearing footsteps around him. I don't know if he made a footstep dropping off that ladder. He's going to get seen now, though. Amanek takes him down. Breezy up in heaven. Drops in. Takes the first. And the second. Out from heaven and on the bomb site itself. Three on three situation gain. Doesn't see any more T-side presence, though. They're still back behind the uh, electric box with their pop dog. And they can rotate to the B-play. Yeah, it's a little bit readable, though, isn't it? I mean, you say that, and Evil Geniuses are only bringing one player over towards a B site. A little bit of information comes through from Cirque. They should bring everyone over, or do they want to just recover these T side weapons and save? That might be their best bet. Bomb has been well, they already had the Famous in for Breezy, and yeah, two AKs for Ethan and Cirque. They rotate right back out to Ivy. No kit in play, no Kevlar for the two AK players, so this will be an overtime call. Keeping that Famous. 
hammer in for the CT side is going to be everything, I think. Breezy did a great job to isolate those two kills, and if they press forward towards the A site any further, then maybe that could have been a way to uh, secure the round. But unfortunately, not to be. We will see 15. Map point for G2 on train, on the pick of the evil geniuses. They got a grind to bring it back from here, man. Four rounds of difference. And there have been so many great moments where you thought that, hey, actually, e EG do look okay, you know? They, they have looked yeah. pretty good against G2, but those moments are gone now. Like, G2 are in full control. Yeah, that, that's the big statement right there is full control. We saw the even at the beginning of the second half, a couple of decent rounds for EG where they won, like, three out of the first four. But since then, like, it's been a really big streak and just some really decent rounds coming through from the T side. And Evil Geniuses are just running out of opportunities. I mean, even look at what Amanek is buying, right? Look how much money they've got. He's still rocking a MAC-10. Oh, fast play, it seems, from G2, and Nays have to do the damage, Incendiary stalls them in their tracks, but Stanislaw's going to need some serious backup, he's the only player here on the B site, G2 have decided which site they're going to hit, and they're going to come converging on his position, falls back to Oil Train, gets on top of the ladder, Ethan will also establish himself here on the summit spot, no one is watching the ramp control, we better focus fire now, because smokes are up, Stan can't support it, flashbang to allow a peek in perhaps, two players up, one player taken, even with his back turn, Stanislaw gets two frags, drops that bomb, crucial enough as Amanek presses, and Stanislaw deals with him the same, three big kills in the back of the B site, and Kenny S and Hunter, last two standing for G2, slowing the pace down, seeing the incendiaries come their way, now they're sandwiched in, can't even make their way back through Pop Dog. Oh, what a round from Stanislaw. What a performance. Three massive kills in round 27. And even Cirque's getting involved now. Hunter uh, with that AK in a one versus five. I mean, his best bet might just be to hold onto this AK just to make sure that the city side don't get another one. They've already got three and maybe Stan might want another one. Getting closer to 30 seconds on the clock. What a hold from Stan. And G2 just kept flooding. They just kept pushing further and further deeper into the site and... Almost sort of straight into him. Might even be on for a 4k. Gets seen by Hunter, but it goes vice versa. Try to pick up the AWP. Hold back, get a long range angle. Good shot comes through from Stan, but the round's pretty much done. Evil Geniuses are going to find their 12th. Tarek taking the frag, getting the 12th of the ball of the CT site. And again, it's credit to Stanislaw because he was the key element. They've needed someone to step up for the longest yeah. time ever. You take a look at those numbers, Dweg, and you can see that Breezy's the only player who's actually positive at the moment. Everybody else is lacking behind in the kill counts, and, and they're being shut down by G2 so effectively. So for Stanislaw to step up like that, like they need more players to do to, to pull off rounds like that. And just generally just confident, like build the confidence on this side. Three AKs in for the CT setup, and AUG for Stanislaw, AWP on Cirque's part of things again. Quick ID control coming in from several flashes over one CTK. Oh, God. No, that's Breezy in with two. His 29th kill up against Nexa. And just like that, G2 are shut down on the default. Oh, that's confident. That is confident. That's going to help AG pushing forward. What a start coming through. Flash out from Ivy. Kenny is going to get caught off in TCON 2 from Tarek. The AK is doing so much damage. And Hunter, again, such a similar position in from that last round as well. 1v5. Circle with the AWP, locked on towards this Pop Dog area. 13 rounds now up for Evil Geniuses. And for G2J, there's actually not a massive amount of money there. They were not expecting Breezy at all there in the uh, in the IU position. So much so they're taking a tactical in this uh, map up. Their first of train. And Breezy's hit his 30 bomb. Again, I want to give plaudits to this player because none of his teammates have even hit 20 yet. Hunter being the only other player on the uh, T side who's hit 20 as well. They have been leading the charge in terms of the frags. And right now for EG, it's going to be pivotal for them to get themselves back into this one. Two rounds to OT. G2 might not be up for a buy here. They've got several players at five grand or above. It might be Nico Hunter and Amonek that buy down a little bit, but not in full here. No, we've certainly seen some overtimes over the last few days and some really close affairs too, going all the way to round 30. And it's looking like this could definitely happen. The G2, going to be buying down into round 29. Actually, no, it's it's a bit more of a half buy, right? Kenny S and Nexa haven't bought themselves, so they're giving themselves enough money in the reserve to actually get a full buy together into round 30. 
This is actually still very much a, a big firepower buy. They're trying to run in towards the side. Surf finds that first kill. Amanek at least finds one trade, but Tarek is on the other side of the smoke, and then the T's are just getting picked apart from here. And a three on two. A case in for Nico and Hunter, the Bosnian duo. Bonded by blood. Cousins themselves trying to fight their way out of the corner. They have been able to force one player away from the site. That's Cirque. Back at Old Bomb, way back up A2. 12, a minute and 12 seconds, I should say, to the clock to get that bomb to cross towards the A side. They've got two players in Pop Dog as well. So if they make a peek out, T side players might be in trouble. Oh, suck turning away. Oh, Hunter's going to hear those footsteps. This could be a bait play because they could find themselves into the B site rotation. Hunter with a knife. No, just taps up the head. Takes a two versus two. Bomb still yet to cross, but he has drawn CTs back over to B. Uh, play the mind games here. 2v2. Nico swings in towards Pop. Oh, the bomb gets dropped, though. And they know where Hunter is. One versus two. Does he just save onto the AK? That could be a bit of an option here. Unless he wants to try and go for this. 1v2 clutch. Time is relatively low. He's going to have to get a move on. Oh, smoke and incendiary. Bomb in the open. Stanislaw's watching it. If he gets damage to EG, that might harm the buy going into the last round of the half. Gets that bomb, pushes up to E box. It, it's all timing for Stanislaw's swing here. Incendiary sees the shoulder bait, smoke down towards Connector, but still caught off by the likes of Tarek. No bomb plan for G2. That's fine. Bacon buy. There's plenty of cash as well for the CT side as well. Tarek can drop. AK staying in. AWP the sun. And EG. Well, it wasn't a big comeback, but they may still bring it back to OT to open this series. Yeah, it's, it's look look at the buy right. If you if you sort of compare the pair, yes, G2 are on the T side, they've got AKs for pretty much everyone. Galil coming through for Nexa, double orbs coming through for EG, something we haven't really seen at all on the CT side, and it's gonna be breezy to pick up the second orb. Also flashes outside here. EG drawing a lot of attention towards this uh a site player, Nexus tags heavy. Amanek's already out for oh! sandwich! Makes two frags happen! Hunting for Cirk next, he gets his all pick in up towards the top of Red Train. Only gets that one frag, though the train is good from the T side line. Nay close to the bomb site, does minimal damage to Kelly S. And now they've got to press forward here. EG. That AWP in Breezy's part, he's been stellar so far on the rifles. Can he make this happen towards a secondary kill? Yes, he can, but still a player close in Amanek. He's had two kills so far. Breezy misses, but Stanislaw trades it. Nico's got the bomb on his back, though. He's on his way to the B sites. It's down to the one versus one. This is going to have to be another huge clutch going the way of Stanislaw. Now he's got the kit, he's got the AUG, and a lot of utility. Nico getting that bomb down over a B, going back out towards the brown halls, and just trying to play the time. Stan's got a smoke and a kit, a HE, a flash as well to support it. He can go for the ninja if he can get up to the site, but he's running the timer very low. Gets on that bomb. Nade close. Did it land short? I think the smoke might have landed short, actually. He's going to be opened up. Flashbang in. Oh, you're right. On the bomb. No. Nico clutches it. 16 to 14. G2 win the first map of train, and we go to a break. Oh.